So Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances, my dandvats. All glories to Shishi Guruho and Gauranga. Today is July the 18th, 2020, and we will be continuing our discussion, our uh, deep study of the Guruvashtakam, the known as commonly known as the Samsara Dhavanal prayers. Uh, last time we concluded verse number six. Uh, we have been discussing verse six for two sessions, and it's a wonderful verse that that gives us a very nice insight as to who our acharyas are, who our guru varg is, and. The verse Vishnu Chakravarti has so nicely incorporated in this Guruvashtakam Nikunja, you know, Ratikeli Siddhyai, Yaya Ali Bhir Yuktir, Apekshaniya, Tatra Ati, Dakshad, Ati Vallavasya, Vande Guru Sri Charnar Arindam. So these Acharya, our Guru Varaks, they are the very special uh, Sakhi, uh, the Sakhi is also known as the Manjaris, the Pran Sakhis or the Nitya Sakhis who are assisting uh, in the union of Radha Krishna in the Nikunja or in the bowers of Sri Vindavan. And they are always with great pleasure, uh, ex excitingly serving for the union of Radha Krishna. And they are actually assistants to the Asta Sakhis of, of Radharani. And they all are very close knit, especially um, the Asta Manjaris, uh, namely Rupa Manjari. Naratam Das Thakur has mentioned in his Bhakti Chandrika about these wonderful eight uh, Manjaris. Um, and their dress, their uh, nikunjas or their kunjas that are very close to the astasakis, to the respective astasakis. So there's Rupa Manjari, we discussed about Sri Rati Manjari. Rupa Manjari is of course Srila Rupa Goswami and Rati Manjari being uh, or, or, or also uh, known as uh, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami in Goranga Mahaprabhu's Leela and also uh, Lavanga Manjari who is uh, Sanatan Goswami Pad and then Rasa Manjari who is Raghunath Bhatta Goswami and Guna Manjari who is none other than Gopal Bhatta Goswami and Vilas Manjari who is none other than Jiva Goswami all these great and then Manjumalali Manjari, who is none other than Srila Rukunath Goswami. So recently, last week, it was the disappearance of Lokanath Goswami. And Narutam Das Thakur is so dear, the only disciple of Lokanath Goswami, who himself is uh, Champak Manjari. And he very nicely, elaborately describes the different uh, sevas of his guru, uh, in the Nitya Leela of Radha Krishna being Manjulali Manjari. And then uh, the eighth Manjari being Kasturi Manjari or Krishnaj Kaviraj Goswami, who is none other than the author of the famous, wonderful treatise, uh, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, like this, Narottam Das Thakur is saying, I shall lovingly serve Sri Radha Madhav along with these. Nitya Siddha Manjaris, uh, the, the eternally liberated Manjaris, and who give so much pleasure to the Jugal Jodi, to the Jugal Sarkar, uh, with great fun and laughter. Uh, Prem Ashwabakari Kautu Hali. So, Narutam Das Thakur and Vishwanath Chakri Thar also explained the word Kautu Hali means it is one who sees something pleasant, a sense of eagerness arises, kautuhali arises in one's consciousness or in one's chitta. So like this, 
the describe verse number six and we also had described this particular nine processes of bhakti that were broken down from right from the adho shraddha beginning of shraddha uh, having faith that brings us to the temples for darshan and also it also brings us the good fortune of meeting sadhus or sadhu sangha we get the association of devotees so we are encouraged to do some hearing some reading chanting dancing uh, honoring prasadam so this is by the mercy of the panchatattva as described and then the next stage being bhajana uh, kriya by the mercy of these vaishnavas the faithful devotee is further guided into doing some serious bhajan uh, that is the the duty and the love of the senior vaishnavas to encourage devotees for their own uh, purification bhajana kriya and then due to bhajan kriya that also involves taking initiation and bhajan kriya also involves hearing from siksha gurus it is just not the diksha guru and there is no difference between siksha and diksha gurus because guru tattva is all one uh, lest we forget a lot of us have these prejudices amongst us and we consider only the initiating spiritual master uh, and the uh, other devotees initiated by the same spiritual master as our own god brothers and god sisters but our gaudi acharyas uh, have very very high ecclesiastical or spiritual values where they see that guru tattva all emanates from shri nityananda prabhu and all sad gurus are nothing but manifestations and we will be studying that in this today's verse the sakshat harit pinavars so bhajana kriya and out of proper when following the disciple or when the devotee follows the instructions under the guidance of a senior vaishnava uh, and, and does the bhajana kriya all the activities that are conducive to bhakti and all activities that are not conducive to bhakti he or she rejects so that bhajana kriya leads to anartha nivritti which is something where chaitanya mahaprabhu starts as chaitanya sastastakam as well with चेतो दर्पण मार्जन भव महादाव अग्नि निर्वापण सो बेसिकली दैट इन दैट दैट इज द वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फोर वर्ड्स और फाइव वर्ड्स ऑफ द फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ द चैतन्य सृष्टाष्टकम दैट इट इज सो इंपॉर्टेंट भजन क्रिया दैट विल एक्चुअली क्लेंज आवर कॉन्शियसनेस एंड दैट विल आल्सो इरेडिकेट आवर अनर्थ निवृत्ति So due to bhajana kriya the next stage of anartha nivritti and that comes by the mercy of the the guru ashray or the siksha and the diksha gurus uh, the vaidhi bhakti is is very prominent and the archana and that is also due to the mercy of the sambandha dev which is radha madan mohan ji and rupa goswami and sanatan goswami so these two goswamis actually uh, help us with our bhajana kriya and anartha nivritti how because they have given us the principles of pure bhakti under the direction of chaitanya mahaprabhu bhakti rasam siddhu and so many wonderful uh, books that are uh, conducive for a true uh, sadhak on how to perform one's bhajana kriya so that all the different anarthas will be dissipated the anarthas are categorized into four the brahma or illusion and within that there are also uh, four categories the brahma about parmatma the illusion about parmatma the supreme lord the illusion about the self the illusion about the practicing or the vaidhi bhakti the sadhana and the sadhya or the goal which is krishna prem so we are sometimes illusion will we get all this will we get krishna prem if we continue chanting or these are so some of these illusions and doubts arise in, in into the 
into the minds or the hearts of, of practicing devotees. So that is also not so good. And then there is also something known as Vishayogiroda. That is also falls in the category of Brahma or illusion, which is we are attracted to things that are uh, against the, the, the main principle of the Vishay. Krishna is the Vishay, the main subject of all devotees. And we are the Ashray of Krishna. So the Vishay and Ashray. So uh, the illusion about that, uh, that uh, sometimes even practicing devotees, in, uh, even once coming to the moment, Iskon being a branch of the Gaudiya Vaishnavisms, devotees sometimes, they are sidetracked into worshipping different, uh, uh, different forms of the Lord rather than the Shamsundar form of Krishna in Vrindavan. So all these are, 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 are detrimental if we don't take the proper guidance. If we ask this question, what is the goal of us Gaudiya Vaishnavas? If we present that question, uh, most uh, shockingly, uh, these devotees and uh, who sometimes are even in the movement for 20 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years, they have no clue. They talk about Krishna Prem. This is the standard answer we hear. No, Krishna Prem is, of course, Krishna Prem is a very standard answer, but it is very important to understand that we are in the school admitted by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and Rupanugas of the school of Radha Dasyam, Radha Das Anudas Anudas. We have to understand the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So all these things, you know, uh, cause illusions within the head. And then, of course, there is the next aprad, uh, 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 sorry, the anartha, which is the uh, asatrishna. Asatrishna meaning the false thirst, uh, like for bhakti, enjoyment, mukti, liberation, calm for different material, hankering after material things, bhakti, mukti, calm and Siddhi, Sakala Ashan. So all these four categories of persons, they will never get the real peace. They will be Ashanta. So that is also considered under uh, uh, one of the Anarthas, under the heading of uh, As uh, Asat Trishna. Asat, some, going behind something that is completely false or illusory, like a mirage. And then the Apradas are also there, which of course, we all know that the Nama Prat and within that there are 10 categories and after that there is Vaishnava Prat, Jiva Prat, Bhagavat Prat. All these Apradas are a part of the anartha, Anarthas and then the last Anartha being Rudai Durbalyam, the weakness of the heart. In Rudai Durbalyam also there are four categories. There is the category of Kutaniti where in, in spite of we are taking the devotional service we have got this duplicitous nature in us. So Kutaniti, that's not good. Vaishnava means simple. Their hearts are most simple. And those whose hearts are most simple, the pure bhakti manifests. The quicker the simplicity arises within our hearts, the bhakti bhakti will manifest. Bhakti Devi is, is, is very, very uh, amazingly merciful to those Vaishnavas who are very simple and they are not duplicitous. And Matsarya, uh, those devotees who do not have any kind of irsha or any kind of jealousy within their hearts. Mm, jealousy is there within each and every one of us, maybe in a form of a mustard seed or as big as a football, but it exists. And once we eradicate that part, we almost enter into the category of Paramahansas. So this is very difficult. Uh, whatever vesh we are in, whatever ashram, whether Brahmacharya, Grihastha, uh, Vanaprastha, or even Sanyas, it's extremely difficult to get rid of that Matsarya because it is on the platform of, of Sukshma. It is subtle and it is on the platform of Pratishta. So some of them devotees are able to give up Kamini and Kanchan. They are able to give up the association of the opposite sex and also they are able to give up attraction for wealth. But to give up Pratishta, Kamini Kanchan Pratishta, 
all three that require when that happens then one is comes into the category of a pure vaishnava of a, of a, of a category of a shuddha vaishnava so these are all different anartha nivrittis that we that we through bhajan kriya so in spite of sometimes we are chanting for years and years and then why this anartha nivritti is not going away we have to examine ourselves very seriously because we are not begging for the mercy we are not very simple hearted we are not even begging to be simple hearted so all these things combined is becoming a major impediment a block so once this anartha nivritti hurdle goes away then the real bhakti begins in the sense that we are situated in nishtha and ruchi where we are steadfast and there uh, the raganuga lobha which is our goal uh, raganuga rag means deep attachment and an and anuga means following in the footsteps of those vrajvasis the vrajvasis have the topmost attachment for krishna for radha krishna especially the gaudiya vaishnavas have very very deep attachment to the lotus feet of shri radha so when they are attached to the lotus feet of radha rani obviously they are attached to the lotus feet of krishna uh, because that gives krishna a lot of pleasure so that is the deep attachment that's raganuga lobha that greed arises and and then there is uh, always the the moment arises always in shravan dasha always listening to the higher subject matters from rasik vaishnavas they are always eager and hankering to hear this katha based on raganuga bhakti from the from those rasik vaishnavas and they they decide to dedicate and live their lives in vrindavan in vraj so this is the lakshan of nishtha and ruchi and at that time they take ashray uh, of the rupa raghunath goswami rupa goswami and raghunath das goswami raghunath das goswami is an amazing example of raganuga bhakti uh, because he mostly gave those higher uh, rasa raghunath das goswami barely gave much instruction in terms of tattva although in the manasiksha he does mention tattva But Raghunath Das Goswami, like Bilab Kusum Manjali, etc., all those uh, Mukta Charita Adi, all those different types, they are all Rasik books. They are Rasik literatures that that will fan the thirst uh, and bring more eagerness out of those Nishtha and Ruchi bhaktas. And 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 then at that time, it is still Vaidhi bhakta. The devotee is still practicing, following the four regulatory principles nicely, chanting. good rounds and 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 meaningful rounds uh, and and also at the same time the door of raganuga bhakti has opened so this is the explanation that is given and then they enter into the next stage of asakti where there is varna dasha they get the ekadash bhav they get the glimpse of what the 11 symptoms are uh, in the varna varna means a description description of the ekadash bhav uh where the the name the roop the form the 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 the, the uh service the uh the place of residence in vraj in eternal what they are so like this there are different 11 the dress all these there are different 11 uh bhavas or different different 11 ekadash ekadash different which the devotee is is under raganuga bhakti is revealed uh and when they are revealed then they start meditating on that and they go into the smaran dasha they go into into always thinking about the service of the uh, the divine couple of radharani because of they already got the varna dasha and this would generally mean in that stage for the gaudiya vaishnavas would mean that they would be serving the other manjaris in, in assisting them so then like this so and then then the bhav in the krishna prem stage comes or the prema stage is just not prema for krishna it is prema for radha krishna we generally make this mistake when we are we are in kind of a, a the language we have to be careful especially when we are mature in our devotional service for after hearing again and again it is just not krishna prem it is prem for radha krishna it is it is it is the service of the jugal jodi ha 
जुगल जोड़ी या देखी या मोरा मोरा आनंद हृदय नाचे भक्ति नो ठाकुर इन इस भजन शुद्ध भक्त चरण रेनो इस सेइंग जुगल जोड़ी इस जस्ट दर्शन कृष्णा कृष्णा चरण देखी आनंद हृदय नाचे आ आ इस सेइंग जुगल जोड़ी सो दैट शोस दैट हु वी आर इट्स सो इम्पोर्टेंट टू लर्न एंड अंडरस्टैंड डीपली द वशना ऑफ भजन सो लाइक दिस that in that bhav stage the apana dasha the dasha or condition comes that oh we i am indeed yours oh guru jana oh manjaris you know i'm i i i am already yours now do as you please give me seva as you please i am your king kari tell me what i should do so there is a apana dasha apana means feeling one's own in that bhav stage and then that samadhi comes even while they are sitting here such vaishnavas in raj mandal wherever they go sometimes they are sitting at the samadhi of sanatan goswami in radha madan mohan temple and they are absorbed in the thought of how long manjari what she is doing what what kind of seva she is doing and following in in her footsteps just meditating sometimes in seva kunj sitting at the lotus feet of rupa manjari or rupa goswami like that or in radha gokul arun temple sitting at the lotus feet of manjula ali manjari or champak manjari Uh, like this, sitting at the lotus feet, the devotee, although present in this present body, is transported into uh, into something known as apan dasha and and samadhi, where they actually uh, have a very clear understanding of what their services are, and and they meditate on that while they are chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, and then they get that. The, the the final stage which is also one in one stay in one sense a beginning stage of radha krishna prem which is the sampatti dasha so in where they actually enter back to godhead into they, they enter into the nitya lila of radha krishna in goloka and 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 their sampatti is radha krishna prana mohan eh huh? like narottam das thakur says so that is the sampatti they are my well uh jivane morane uh like that uh, so every step of the way that radha and krishna they are my only wealth so that is the sampati dasha they feel like that and also radha rani feels that this particular manjari or this sevika is my sampati when that that when that closeness you know like just like how we feel for our children or our 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 beloved we feel that you are mine and she is mine or you are like how a boyfriend and a girlfriend you know in their love how they feel that no 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 you know i'm going to take care of you you are mine you know you are not pariah you're not you're not some stranger so this is the the sampati dasha and then there are further delineations of krishna prem of sneha snigdha mana uh, the different uh, raga anuraga भाव महाभाव एंड देन मदनाक्य एंड मोहन मोहनाक्य भाव ऑफ श्रीमती राधा रानी सो ऑल दीस थिंग्स आर देयर सो वी शुड एट लीस्ट हैव सम इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन दीस ऑन दीस डिफरेंट लेवल्स सो दैट यू नो वी आर प्रॉपर्ली मेडिटेटिंग ऑन देम एंड वी आर एट लीस्ट डिजायरिंग बिकॉज़ इफ वी हैव इंफॉर्मेशन देन वी कैन हैव दैट डिजायर जस्ट लाइक समटाइम्स व्हेन वी आर सिटिंग इन इंडिया अ स्टूडेंट इज थिंकिंग ओह नाउ दैट आई हैव डन माय इंजीनियरिंग or my medical i did well so they have start getting information they want to excel and they want to go globally so they want to get admission in united states the best colleges harvard stanford etc so then they already have information they study so much they ask other people and then they get attracted to those particular goals that they have in their life similarly for us as godi vaishnavas it is so important to have the proper information and that desire and it is so sad sometimes that none of the, uh, uh, these these devotees are interested in it so they say prabhupad never talked about it you know we should stick to prabhupad's books then you know we have to just leave them okay baba that is your understanding okay no problem you know prabhupad bless you with some more understanding at some point in your life or in some lifetime that's all we can say not to kind of you know condescend them or not to look at this you know we are doing this wonderful 
uh, uh, samsara downhill prayers in such in depth, but how many are really interested? So I sometimes, you know, feel that Radharani has the right to reserve who she wants to share how much information about about them and about her her uh, own uh, sampatti, which we have been describing about the manjaris who are the sampatti of Radharani. So they they deserve they, they reserve the right, uh, and uh, uh, depending on the devotee's intense desire, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, which is an amazing shloka that can apply all the way uh, to to Krishna Rasa, which is Yathamam Prapadyante Bajamiya. So one has to desire the 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 to be in Mahaprabhu's inner circle or to have that bhav then Mahaprabhu will arrange it. Mahaprabhu is none other than Radha Govinda. And, and so Jugal Sarkar will arrange that because they are there within the hearts of, of devotees and they're also there in the heart of, of all those Rasik Vaishnavas. So when somebody approaches, you know, and then they get attracted and then again and again they come and hear. So that means we have to understand that some special Kripa uh, is, is playing a role here. Not that, you know, I'm speaking all these subjects. It is somehow the other the mercy of Radharani through the Acharyas, through Prabhupada, that I'm able to do so. Because sometimes when I'm speaking on these subjects, I even don't know what I'm going to say. It is sometimes just flowing. Maybe I, I, I'm, I'm susceptible to making some mistakes. So I beg the Vaishnavas to overlook that and, and grab the essence. So it is so important to at least have a very strong foundation on who we are. Like if we ask a student that Baba, you are admitted in this particular college, then the student at least knows that he is a student of science or within science, he is a, he is a student of IT or engineering, etc, etc. But otherwise, you know, we are just you know, like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, this applies to each and every one of us. If we have not understood, this particular shloka is also very rasic. And Krishna and there's a philosophy. Vasudev Krishna is telling that if one's mind is multi-branched, samadhavna vidyate, then we cannot attain perfection in any of it. So neither will we, we will attain perfection in Vaikuntha Bhakti nor in Golok Bhakti. Uh, I have seen so many devotees that you know that I, I that I know actually initiated by the same spiritual master, and I have been tired for the last 30 years. I've known them, and they still go every Saturday. They run for that Hanuman. Uh, what do you call uh, 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 Sundarkand a part that they have been used to in certain groups that uh, that. Uh, uh, that they have been going, uh, that they have been going to, that they, and 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 like, what does Prabhupada mean? You're going to Mataji's Choki, you're going to this Anmanchalisa. They are all great Vaishnavas, no doubt. But have you read Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam? Have you read? Did you find the time to read the Chaitanya Charitamrita? No. And they want to go here and there and just because, you know, they they find and then, then the answer one devotee gave me that I've known for the last 30 years. Oh, I get the chance to do some Kirtan and I'm giving Mahamantra to everybody. And I tell in my mind, nonsense. You're going there for Pratishtha. That's what you're doing. Because, you know, you, you don't even know the basic philosophy of our movement. And, and, and you're going to certain places because they are giving you man, pan, etc. And that is not what about even if you are getting the association of one good devotee, you know, you, one should grab it. That is our our bhav. It is not na janam na dhanam na sundarim kavita va jagdisha kamaya chetana mahaprabhu na janam. We are, we are not into janam, not into people that I will get so many disciples or followers. Ah, first thing that Mahaprabhu mentions. Eh, that na dhanam, na dhanam, no, no wealth, na dhanam, na janam, no followers. I'm not interested in all that. So that comes only when that Vishesh Kripa comes. And along the way, if we can encourage one devotee, two devotees, three devotees, 30 devotees, so be it. But let us 
make our goals very straightforward. Who we are. We need to put blinders at some point. That is not fanaticism. That is not fanaticism. Otherwise, if you, if we want, of course, there are Advaita, Machuta, Manadim, Ananta Rupam. Krishna has got Ananta Rupa. How many Rupas are you going to, forms of Krishna are you going to worship? And, and are you going to get any, any uh, particular expertise of Seva? If you try to worship each and every form, no, not possible. Samadhona Vidyate. Krishna has, of course, some people translate that as the worship of demigods. And if you try to worship all the different Devi Devtas, then Samadhona Vidyate. That is a very, that is a very, very normal meaning. But Samadhona Vidyate also means that if you have taken to the Seva of Rajendranath and Krishna, then stick to it. Uh, Stick to that. Raghunath Gadas Goswami says also, if you want to mature in your bhakti, stick to the lotus feet of one Vrajvasi who, who you are attracted to and follow in his footsteps. So this is this is the bhav of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And the bhav and prem stage come under the, the uh, prayojan devta, the Shishi Radha Gopinath ji. So like that, it is a very siddha platform. I, I like to mention this again and again. This is perhaps the third time I've mentioned this in the Samsara Davanal prayers because it is it is nice to to know the nine different stages of, uh, of bhakti and where we stand. Every time I repeat this, I am like, you know, examining myself also and what I need to work so that I can attain, uh, you know, at least that desire, constant desire to attain the desired goal of Gaudiya Vaishnavism to please the Acharyas, to please Srimati Radharani. So, uh, like this, uh, this is the, 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 what we had discussed uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> in, 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 in verse number six. So, now we come to verse number seven, uh, which is Shakshat Haritena Samastha Shastra Uktastatha Bhav Yataeva Sadvi Kinto prabhoya priyavatasya vande guru shri charnarvinda. What a beautiful verse this is. I'm amazed that, you know, even with my little tiny intelligence and brains, when I actually uh, read these prayers or meditate on them, this is something that we can even all meditate when we are chanting the Mahamantra to keep our minds distracted. Even in, a, in, in the present stage, sometimes, you know, we are. Uh, we chant the holy name because we have taken a vow or we chant because we have kind of sometimes mechanized ourselves to chanting the holy name, which is good. You know, I'm not saying that is bad, but what is better and best is when we are able to control the mind by thinking about all these different, take one Vaishnava bhajan. You know, I'm talking about our stage. I'm talking, that's what I do sometimes when I'm sitting and chanting in one place. I take one Vaishnava bhajan, I meditate on it while I'm chanting the Mahamantra and believe it or not, Prabhus and Mataji, it has it helped me immensely. And it, it kind of transports you to a different world, at least the time that you're chanting without any disturbance. Every word when you meditate, that really helps. And today what I'm sharing with you has come through some of these realizations that I'm speaking is out of when I'm chanting like this and thinking and meditating on every word, the acharyas within the heart, you know, they are actually chakshudan dilo jai janme janme prabhu sai divya gyan vride prakashito. They give us this because of that desire. I'm not saying that it manifests every time, but it has. So the thing is that that is one of the things that I have personally adopted. That take one nice Vaishnava bhajan, take one arti, meditate on it. Or take one pastime uh, of of uh, of Krishna and meditate on that pastime, and, and our chanting becomes so amazingly sublime. So Sakshat Haritvena. So what does Sakshat mean? Sakshat means directly, uh, di directly. Or Sakshat means like uh, how should I put it in English? Sometimes there is a difficulty. In putting Hindi words or Sanskrit words exactly to be translated to English are very difficult. Uh, the the direct perception is is called shakshat. Haritena. Uh, 
uh, with the quality of Hari. So we will take the word of each and every word in Sanskrit and then we will try to uh, kind of, you know, uh, share uh, the, or kind of, you know, expound on the meanings of this particular verse. So Sakshat Haritvena. So Haritva, Hari means Krishna and Tva means possessor of, with the quality of. Hmm. So, uh, uh, so one who has possessed the qualities of Sri Hari, the the Sakshat, uh, the directly they are those personalities who have imbibed the qualities of Sri Hari. Now, what does Hari mean? This is a very very actually amazing word that I was meditating many many times while chanting, and also some revelations have come. So. Maybe I can share those and then maybe at the end of this katha, you all can uh, please give me your input. So this, the many, many word meanings are there. Hari means to hara. Hara means to take away. So what is there that the Hari takes away? Takes away the standard or the, the, the meaning is that it takes away our sinful reactions. Aham tam sarva pape bhyo, moksha syami ma suchaha, sarva dharman paritajya. Krishna says, so I will take away all those sinful reactions or I will take away all the reactions, pious and impious. And, and, and you know, when, when the pious and impious reactions are taken away, what is the result? The result is that one doesn't get reborn in this material world. What a wonderful uh, 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 realization here. So Hari is so powerful that he can take away the reactions because if we are, if we are left with the huge bank balance, of pious activities, punya karma, then we have to go to the heavenly planets. And then after that has expired, we come back again. Then there is no guarantee that we will have good association or sattvic association. We may end up with some rajasic or tamasic uh, association. And then again, uh, we may have to go to the narak yatna or the hellish planets. So uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, this famous verse, I'm sure most of you all know that. Uh, in this fashion, uh, the jiva is simply oscillating in this material worlds, Brahman, in the 14 planetary systems, in the, in the six upper planetary systems known as the heavenly planets, and the seven hellish planets, and in between the earthly planet. So that's called Chauda Bhuvan. In this fashion. So by the mercy of Hari, that jiva is most fortunate. Guru Krishna Prasade by Bhakti Lata Beach. By the mercy of Guru, who is the personified, who has got the personified qualities of Hari. And what is that most important, one of the most important qualities of Hari is taking away our sinful reactions. So definitely one has to understand that it is said in the scriptures that one should not become a guru unless one is able to take the sinful reactions of the disciples that uh, that the guru is initiating. Uh, so if one decides to become a guru, then uh, it's a very very dangerous position for their for themselves. And if they are very wonderfully fixed, then it will not matter to them. But if they are, let's say, a Madhyam Kanishta kind of a guru, where they themselves are struggling with their senses, and uh, they are not on that very high Uttam Madhyam platform, then they will have to suffer the reactions of their disciples. Personally, I have seen Prabhuji's Mataji one time I'm not going to take any names because that would not be appropriate. But in Chicago, this is, I'm talking about 25 years ago. Uh, there, is a, there is a nice initiating Vaishnava Guru in uh, our ISKCON movement. And he is so simple and he's so nice in all respects that he's not attracted to money, always speaking so nicely on the scriptures and so dedicated to Srila Prabhupada's movement. And then, uh, in fact, his disciples, he used to give money to his disciples. Can you believe which guru gives money to the disciples? If the disciples needed something, 
and he never kept any money for himself. Anytime there is any kind of katha, prasadam, any kind of requirements that were there, and there was not sufficient funds, whatever he got as, as a gift from the devotees, he would just distribute that so that the prasadam should be nice for the visiting devotees, so that the facilities should be nice, etc. And he did not bother whether he was in the United States or in London. He used to go to even the smaller villages of India and, and do Bhagavad Katha Adi. And sometimes, you know, uh, so there was one such devotee that I practically noticed. He was from Gujarat. And this devotee, he had this deep desire to come to the West. So he talked to his guru. And, uh, and then somehow or the other, because he is so respected in the society and he used to go to Chicago every year doing Katha, some of the other Chicago temple had a requirement for pujaris. So during the conversation, probably with the management of the president, this topic may have come up in his presence. So he kind of put two plus two together. Oh, there is one disciple of mine. He is a Brahman initiated. And if you want, I can uh, talk to him and see if you are interested. So that way, you know, your shortage of pujari will be fulfilled. So... All said and done, it was arranged, and this person came. And, and then when he came, originally he was doing his service very nicely, but after a few days or a month, some kind of weakness got into him. And then he started asking money from the congregation members, and sometimes lies were there. Um, personally, also, he gave me a post dated check saying that, you know, I'm getting some money very soon. Can you give me $300? So I said, no problem, Prabhu, here, I will give you. And then obviously I never saw that money come back. And then I found out he had taken money from other devotees as, devotees as well. And I'm not trying to uh, criticize any of this. Please, I'm giving this example. There is a specific reason because it is coming from a, from not from hearsay, from a practical example. So initially in my very, very early days in Chicago, I was struggling. I had a business and I could not keep keep it afloating. I had a, a store and I had to pay my employees. I had to pay the rent. I was already locked into a lease. So all this having said and done, you know, I had to actually do an extra job myself. I'm talking about 28 years ago. And I actually uh, worked in a motel at night for a few hours. And then I also drove a taxi. I had taken a taxi license in Chicago. So after my, uh, my, my uh, I would work a few hours at the store, then I would go to the motel. There was a Gujarati person who had hired me. So I would work like four or five hours there. And then at, after 11 in the midnight, I would start driving a taxi until 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning. So one time I got a call on the radio. You know, it was radio dispatch. And then, uh, surprisingly, I got a call near our uh, Lunt Avenue Temple in Rogers Park. And it was in the alley, not too far from the temple. So, and then I uh, saw this person uh, waiting in the alley for the taxi. And he was all uh, dressed up in, uh, in, in, in a normal uh, trousers and shirt, etc. And then he tells me, to take me to a particular bar. And this was, this happened to be a homosexual, a gay bar. And, uh, you know, I was like, Krishna, I know you, you know, like, but he could not tell that I was, uh, I, I, I was that person, uh, that he had already interacted with me. And then, you know, what to do? You know, he's my customer and I don't even, kind of, you know, disturb him. I was just kind of shocked. So this is like almost at 11.30 or midnight at that time. So then I, you know, naturally, you know, take him to his destination. He gives me my money and then I'm done and I'm like thinking. And then I was thinking like, look, these are the kind of disciples uh, gurus have. And even a Shuddha guru sometimes has to suffer. So this particular Maharaj then, you know, I, he got into... Uh, into a, a very bad uh, health situation where he got a very bad stroke and and some of the other, you know, 
he is still surviving and he's got great spirits and he still speaks katha as if nothing happened but my point is that that devotees also have a responsibility not to behave in such a way that it will affect and a pure spiritual master can absorb all these karmas but if the spiritual master is not pure then he will have an issue he will definitely suffer that is why most sadhus do not allow uh, their feet to be touched by people in india we have this tradition that if you meet any elderly person the sanskar or the the etiquette is that you should bow down and touch their feet it could be even the the parental figures or grandfatherly grandmotherly figures but it also applies to especially when you see a sadhu so when you come across a sadhu um, most people try to touch the feet and and then it is said that the moment you allow them to touch your feet then you are actually taking their bad karmic reaction on 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 your head so a lot of sadhus don't allow them for two reasons it out of humility and also they are also afraid that hey i'm not that pure if somebody touches my feet then you know it is possible that i may be incurring the 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 onslaught of a bad karma on my head and i may not be able to handle that i may not be able to do my own bhajan sad, sadhan properly so having said that the guru and shishya have both a great responsibility so such here we are talking about in this verses is those gurus who are 100% pure in every aspect and these are the gurus who are actually radharani's uh, servitors so obviously uh, uh, nobody can can surpass them in their super excellent qualities of haritvina uh, because they have imbibed those qualities of from shri radharani so here harit so radharani also if i go a little bit deeper hari uh, or the word hara uh, so these are all synonymous i'm not an expert in sanskrit but uh having uh, uh understood some of the important uh, uh components uh hara also means uh the 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 uh, of course it means the energy of the supreme lord but hara also means somewhere in that the haritva is there meaning one who can absorb absorb the 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 uh, the the uh the onslaught of karma pap etc and not only that one who can absorb all those other qualities that are an impediment to bhakti so so radha rani is of such nature krishna is of such nature that they can absorb everything if one surrenders to them and that is why the word hara when we are chanting hare krishna uh, you, we can actually analyze that a little bit further where the word hara actually we are addressing the energies of krishna the internal potencies of krishna when we are chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, ram hare hare the word hara hara uh, the standard meaning is we are addressing uh, the head of all the internal potencies of krishna shrimati radha rani which is absolutely correct but there is a deeper meaning chaitanya mahaprabhu has said in the second verse nam nam akari bahuda nija sarva shaktis please the word that is being stressed is stressed is nija nija means my own sarva shakti so here nija first of all it indicates shrimati radharani and the manjaris and the ashtagopis and all the other rajvasis it is extended uh, it is my own home just like in the damodar ashtakam uh, you see there are so many connections and i do not like to rush into when a sphurti comes in my heart i like to kind of expound on it uh, some devotees may be thinking that this is probably the 13th session that we are going on into and we are still in this in the beginning of the seventh verse yes my dear devotees that's what this is meant for i'm not in a temple environment where i have uh, been allotted 45 minutes or 1 hour to a class and then people are just looking at the clock for prasadam time no that is why we know that our attendance is very very low and that is what i even prefer because anybody who rushes such subjects then i think they are kind of uh, uh, spiting their own nose let's put it that way ah so the point was that the meaning of the word hara the word hara 
is not only Srimati Radharani. Uh, see, Krishna, this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, they are, they are, he is Krishna. How can he make any mistakes in, in any kind of Sanskrit composition or grammar? Hmm. The great Sarva Hotacharya, it is mentioned in that Jagannath Puri uh, pastime, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, being a very young sannyasi, 24 years old, and he shaved his head and he took sannyas from the uh, Mayavad ashram of uh, Kesho Bharti uh, sannyas. Because at that time there were no Vaishnavas available. So he took Ekdanda sannyas. And when he took Ekdanda sannyas into the uh, Bharti Sampradaya, and when he visited uh, Jagannath Puri, at that time when he was in front of Lord Jagannath, he went into some kind of an ecstasy and he started chanting the Mahamantra, tears flowing in his eyes and he just standed and he went into a very, very amazing spin and he kept on dancing and every morning Sarva Bhattacharya along with his disciples. The word Sarva Bhoma itself indicates it is a kind of an adjective. It is, it is, it is a qualification of a person less like Bhakti Vedanta. Uh, like Srila Prabhupada has been addressed by that Sambodhan or where he is known as Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. So this is an additional uh, qualification that has been uh, that, that has been attached to his name. Actually Prabhupada's name uh, is, is Swami Maharaj. I don't know how many Iskonites know that. He, when he took the sannas from uh, Bhakti Pragyan Kesho Maharaj, his uh, senior god brother. Uh, he actually, and, 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 and because Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Prabhupada had already left the planet. And he had initiated Srila Prabhupada into the first and second initiation, into Harinam Diksha and the uh, Brahman Diksha. And he was known as the Abhay Charnaravinda Dev. In Gaudiya Math, they first generally uh, do not change the name of the devotee, uh, like in Iskon. Like in the Iskon, in the first initiation itself, they are given a spiritual name. But in the Gaudiya Math, the name is changed when they get their second initiation, when they get the Brahman Diksha at that time. So Bhakti Siddhan Prabhupada gave him the name, uh, Abhay Babu, the name Abhay Charnaravinda Das. That was his initiated name. And then when Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada came in his dream several times, that you must take sannyas. And Prabhupada was thinking, what a horrible dream. He, you know, he kind of naturally felt that, uh, and here that word horrible, again, it has to be understood in the right perspective. Not that a spiritual master is coming in the dream and we call it horrible. No. What he was trying to express is, is his deep humility. Oh, I'm not qualified to take sannyas. I'm still a working person. I'm still, you know, uh, trying to make ends meet. I have children. I have a wife. So in that aspect, he was thinking, that's a horrible dream, you know. Like, I don't know why Guru Maharaj is asking me to take sannyas. And not once, three times, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur came. And then he expressed, uh, Abhay Charnaravinda Prabhu expressed his desire to the senior members of the Gaudiya Mat. And they said, no, 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 no. You have to come and serve in the Gaudiya Mat and then we will see if you... And then many times, Srila Prabhupada used to request that the Guru Maharaj has said that uh, we should preach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the Western world. And uh, it is my desire to uh, fulfill the desire of Prabhupada. So everybody in Gaudiya Mat calls Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saswati Thakur Prabhupada. So please try to understand the nomenclature here. Okay. So uh, when they call, when they address, so it was Prabhupada's desire, uh, Bhai Charna Ravinda Babu, or Abhay Charnaravinda Prabhu requested to his senior god brothers and they said, no, you come and stay in the mat and then we will see. And then uh, once we think that you are qualified enough, then we will see. So that was the condition that they had put on Abhay Charnaravinda Prabhuji. So then finally Abhay Charnaravinda Prabhu expressed his desire to one very senior god brother, Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, who also happens to be the Gurudev of the famous Sri Narayan Maharaj. So, and Sri Narayan Maharaj actually performed the Samadhi of Srila Prabhupada, our Prabhupada, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. 
So there was a lot of closeness there. And Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, he was known as the Kesari Acharya. Very, very perfect in Sanskrit and many compositions. And he was very much dear to Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur also. So he had understood the heart of Srila Prabhupada, meaning Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Prabhupada. And he understood when Abhay Charna Ravinda Prabhu expressed that desire, he said, if nobody gives you sannyas, I will give you sannyas. You become a sannyasi and I will give you. So like that, he gave sannyas and that sannyas was necessary for preaching. Same way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas for a reason because after taking initiation from Srila Ishwarpuri path, he had become practically from the external eyes a crazy person. He was only simply chanting Harinam. He was only dancing in Navadvip. All the his students, because he was running a Patshara, a toll, a, a Sanskrit school. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. How can his Sanskrit be imperfect? He even defeated that famous Keshav Kashmiri, who was the Digvijay Pandit. That was his name, who had come all the way from Kashmir. And he had gone to all the different places in Bharatvarsh. And somebody told him, then he knew that Navadvip was the seat of learning. Just like uh, Banaras, uh, Kashi Vishwanath is also considered a seat of loving, a learning. A lot of scholars are there who learn Sanskrit and uh, especially a lot of the Mayavads. Uh, even today, they are in Banaras. You'll find a uh, dime by the dozen there. So many. So many Sanskrit schools and, and so many different. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at the tender age not even a teenager, he defeated Keshav Kashmiri when he had come to Nardi. And then at, during the time of the Pindadan of his father, he went to Gaya after his pa father uh, Jagannath Mishra passed away. So as, a, as an obedient son, he went and did the Pindadan for the satisfaction of his mother, Sachi Mata. And there he found his Gurudev, Shri Ishwar Puripad. And Ishwar Puripad, seeing, he recognized who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, he is Krishna. But that inspiration came and he said, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I want to get initiated. And Jishwad Bhuripat says, I know you are, I cannot initiate you. Similarly, the similar connotation here when Narutam Das Thakur approached Loknath Goswami. Narutam Das Thakur uh, was such a great scholar and Loknath Goswami said, no, 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 I am not fit to be a guru. Another situation. See, we have to know the lives of our Vaishnava saints. Another situation, even with Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, when he approached Srila Gorkishwad Das Bhavaji Maharaj, Srila Gorkishwad Das Bhavaji Maharaj knew that he is the son of the great Bhakti Vinod Thakur. How can I initiate him? He is so scholarly. He is amazing. He is like an encyclopedia. And of course, Gorkishwad Das Bhavaji Maharaj knew that he is none other than Nayana Manjari, a very, very close uh, sevika of Rupa Manjari. Nababana. I cannot, I, I cannot initiate. So like that, uh, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, at uh, that time, uh, you know, he was just known as Bimla Prasad. That was his name. So Bimla Prasad Babu or Bimla Prasad Prabhu used to approach Srila Gorkishwar Dwaji Maharaj on the request of his father, Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ji, that he is the perfect guru for you. Take him. Bhakti Vinod Thakur being Kamla Manjari understood. He is none other than Guna Manjari, another expansion of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So that is also so so amazing that, that our Vaishnava Acharyas are so humble. Very easily he could have initiated his own son, but he says, No, I, I, I'm not going to give you initiation. You take from and Gorkishod Bhavaji Maharaj from uh, the common man standard, he was an Anguta chap. He, he was completely illiterate. He could not even read. And Bhakti Siddhan Sushri Prabhupada was eloquent in Sanskrit, in Farsi, in Arabic. In, in, in all the major languages of the world, just like Rup Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. Just see the, the parallelities here. Um, so when Sri Bhakti Siddhan Rupat kept on approaching, then Gaur Krishna Dhaji Maharaj kept on postponing by saying, I will ask Mahaprabhu and then I will let you know whether I will initiate you or not. So like this, this went on back and forth. And then Gaur Krishna Dhaji Maharaj uh, finally uh, Bimla Prasad Prabhuji, he said, if you don't initiate me, I will give up my life in the Ganga. That's it. So then, uh, Gaur Krishna Bhaji Maharaj was forced to initiate him because of course it was the will of Krishna. 
And then he understood Mahaprabhu came in his dream and said, you please initiate him. And that was his only disciple. Narutam Das Thakur was the only disciple of Loknath Goswami. And similarly, uh, Ishwar Puripad's only disciple was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, uh, when he came back to Navadip, uh, before that, when he got the Harinam initiation, he asked, he said, no, Ishwar Puripad said, no, I'm not giving you initiation. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, inspired him and says, give him initiation. Krishna himself came in Ishwar Puripad Prabhu's dream. And then obviously, you know, he had to comply. Just like Loknath Goswami, Krishna came, Mahaprabhu came in his dream. Please initiate Naruttam. It is my desire. So then like that, Ishwar Puripad initiated him and took the role of a guru. And when he took the role of a guru, he gave him the Mahamantra. And when he started chanting the Mahamantra, then he even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when, when he back went when he went back to Naradip, all he did is chant the Mahamantra, started crying in ecstasy. That is the potency of a pure guru. He is Krishna. He doesn't need initiation. But that is the tattva. That is Haritvena. I'm just concentrating on this first word. That is Sakshat Haritvena. Where, where the potency is, is transferred into the disciple. And due to the full faith that the disciple has displayed. So that Haritva, uh, uh, that, 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 uh, that uh, the direct quality of, of the transcendental quality of Hari, where the Gurudev is the transparent medium without any obstruction, it is passed over. So then he, everybody was saying, what happened to Nimai Pandit? What happened? So then Nimai Pandit used to be like, Guru Mora Morkha Deki. My Guru has seen that I am a foolish person. And he said, just chant Hare Krishna. And like that, he used to, uh, he used to take a very humble position and 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 give his guru Ishwarburi path such a high position by saying that that my guru thinks that I'm a foolish person and I should just chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So when that happened, his whole uh, respect with the common people, they could not understand what was going on. So that respect was lost. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, time was ticking. He had to spread the Hare the, 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 the Mahamantra, he had to spread Hari Kirtan, Ajanu Lambita Pujo, Kanakayo, Dhato, Sankirtane, Pitaro, Kamalaya Taksho, Vishwambaro, Dvijavaro, Yuga Dharma Palo, Vande Jagata Priyakaro, Karuna Avtaro. He had a particular uh, internal and external reasons for coming, and it was time for him now. So then he is thinking, Ajanu Lambita Pujo, these two great personality, Gaur and Nitai, whose Hands are extending to their knees. Ajanu lambito bujo. Kanakaya udhato. And their complexion is golden. Kanakaya udhato. And they are Kamalaya taksha. Beautiful lotus petal eyes. Sankirtanai pitaro. They are the founders of the Sankirtan movement. The fathers rather. Sorry. Not the founders. But the pitaro. Pitaro means the plural. Both Gaur and Nitai. Uh, they are the Pitaro, the fathers of the Sankirtan. They are the fathers who gave, who inundated everybody with love of God and love of Krishna in the Madhuri Rasa. The fathers, Sankirtanai Pitaro, Kamalaya Taksha, Vishwambaro Dvijavaro. They are none other than Vishwambaro. They are the Palaks. Vishwa means the whole creation. And Bharo means one who is providing for everyone. Uh, Vishwambaro, Dvichavaro, they were born to both great Brahmans and they both are both Brahmans. Adai Pandit was the father of Nityananda Prabhu and Jagannath Mishra was the father of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, they are Dvichavaro. Dvija means twice born. Dvija. Varo. Varo means the topmost Brahmanas. The leaders of the Brahmins. Dvichavaro. Sankirtanai Pitaro, Kamalaya Takshos, uh, one day Jagata Priya Karo, Karuna Avtaro. And I offer my obeisances. Uh, Jagata Priya, they are very, very uh, Priya of the entire creation. Jagata Priya Karo and they are Karuna Avtar, both of them Gornitai. This shloka was composed by Sri Vindavan Das Thakur. In the beginning, he writes in Chaitanya Bhagwat. And Chaitanya Charitamrita is a combination that, that has been expounded by Sri Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami from Chaitanya Mangal, 
by uh, by uh, Lochan Das Thakur and Chaitanya Bhagavat of Vrindavan Das Thakur. And Vrindavan Das Thakur is none other than incarnation of Sakshad Vyasdev. So again, Sakshad Haritvena. Vyasdev, who is Mahavishnu himself, who compiled all the Vedas, he himself could not hold himself back when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he wanted to compile something so badly and that came in the form of Chaitanya Bhagavat. <laughs> his, uh, those who have been to Nadip, his place of residence is in Mamgachi. Very beautiful, peaceful place. So if you all go to Mayapur, please visit the, the birthplace of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Mm, Vrindavan Das Thakur himself actually was given the opportunity to suck Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's toe. And his mother being Narayani, we don't know much about the father of Vrindavan Das Thakur, but uh, Narayani was blessed with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's presence. So all these wonderful uh, leelas are coming to mind. So the point is that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw that there is no respect and he has something to do, so he has to preach. Uh, uh, and So he said, okay, now I will take sannyas. So he decides overnight, leaving his wonderful newlywed bride, um, Lakshmi Priya Mata, and, and right there, you know, uh, he like overnight, he, he decides and then, you know, he really amazingly, it is said in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, just like there is a flickering of a lamp, when the lamp is about to die, it flickers even more. So his consort saw that happening and she understood that now my husband is going to leave. And, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with a lot of love, you know, even kind of decorates her that particular night before he started, he decided to take sannyas. And then early in the morning, he's gone without telling his mother. And then it's like all of Navadip started crying. And then they heard that across the Ganga, he is actually shaving his head. Even the barber was, 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 could not hold back his ear because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had wonderful long hair. So beautiful just because he's Krishna. Snig the Kuntalai. Uh, that is the description that is given for the hair of Krishna. In the Dhamadarashtakam. Moves chumbitam bimba rakta dharam me. Like that in that particular verse. Uh, the description of the hair. So wonderful, beautiful, curly locks of hair. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had the same hair. And non-different because he is Krishna. And the barber could not, he did not want to cut the hair. Not, no, no, I'm not going to do it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then Advaita Acharya came and Nityananda Prabhu came. And, and, and then... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, I have something to achieve. I have something to gain and give the world, please. And then he takes, he shaves his head and then he takes sannyas from a Mayavai, Kesho Bharti Maharaj. And then he's the egg dandi sannyas. In Vaishnava, there is three dandi sannyas. So these are some of the principles that we have to follow. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and it is amazing. The other day, I'm taking some classes on, on, uh, on uh, in Gujarati. For many years, I've been doing it in in Chicago, so that same group approached me. That why don't you do it on Zoom because of the COVID? So I do that twice a week on Monday and Thursday. So one of the devotees sent me one clip. It's amazing. Sorry, this might be sound like a little digression, but it is not a digression. There is some in-depth information that I'm sharing to about Shakshat Haritvana. So uh, one devotee sent me one Mayavad's clip, one very scholarly person. This was up about 10 days ago. And uh, he appeared uh, uh, to be, he was a follower of Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya. And then he made this claim that Iskon is false and the Godiamat is false, claiming that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is there. And they are talking about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy of Achintya Veda Veda Tattva. So he actually in that video clip I saw, it's about a 30-40 minute video clip and I was surprised at the in-depthness of his scholarship and he actually took the uh, Bhavishya Puran and in the Bhavishya Puran he took one slok and in that shloka the mention of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there and how he took sannyas from Kesho Bharti, the Ekadandi sannyas. So he based on that shloka he is saying that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu belongs to the Sampradaya of Shankaracharya Pad. <laughs> so his scholarship was concentrating to prove that, you know, the, the, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas 
including ISKCON, are completely false. And they are, because in ISKCON and in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, it is three Dandi Sanyasi. Three Dandi Sanyas. Whereas Mahaprabhu took one Danda Sanyas, that means he has taken initiation in the Shankara, uh, the, the Shankara, Shankaracharya path, disciplic succession. Very nice argument. Amazing. And, you know, uh, if, if people do not know how to respond to it or understand it, then they will certainly think wrong about the Gaudiya Vaishnavism and Iskand in terms of the philosophy. So this particular person, I don't think his name was displayed or maybe he may have introduced himself, but I don't remember the name. But anyways, he's 100% wrong. Because from that perspective, Krishna is Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. Number one point. Number two, he can decide where he can come and where he can go. Like some people argue that, oh, you know, he came in Dwapar, Krishna came, but Lord Ramachandra came before Krishna in Treta. So Krishna is an avatar of Lord Ramachandra. These are the arguments they put. So the answer is very simple. It's given in the Srimad Bhagavatam, very first line of very first couple lines. Krishna is Abhigya and Swaran. Yeah. Vyasdev himself, who is Mahavishnu, who is one of the sub avatars of Krishna. He himself has said, as Vyasdev, that he is Abhigya. He knows everything. He, he knows everything directly and indirectly. And he's Swaran. He's fully independent. So a very simple example can be just like the team uh, captain of a cricket team. He is completely independent. Uh, like I remember in my childhood, I remember Sunil Gavaskar. He always used to come as the opening batsman. That's what is. But sometimes I remember still that he used to come third down or fourth down. It is his will. When he can, and sometimes Sunil Gavaskar, who was a predominant and a world-class batsman, he was not known as a bowler. But sometimes we have seen those who are from the old school, and if they remember the old day cricket. He has done even bowling also because he is the captain. He decides when, who is going to bowl, who is going to bat, at what number. So similarly, if Krishna is merciful to take initiation in the Bharti Sampradaya or in the Sankracharya Path Sampradaya, because he is Jagat Guru, he can take initiation wherever he wants. But that does not make him simply a property of one particular Sampradaya. Just like some people are arguing like this and, and like, you know, uh, and, and, you know, rightfully so, they feel like that, that ISKCON is only, Krishna is only the property of ISKCON. Uh, people feel that because of certain uh, interactions. So that is not true either. Krishna is a universal concept. He is the universal Jagat Guru. He is, he is the Surut Sarva Bhutana. So if he, according to time, place and circumstance, he took initiation from a Bharti Sanyasi because he had, just like Srila Prabhupada, perfect example that I can give an analogy is Srila Prabhupada gave initiation to the young Western devotees who had just taken initiation, first initiation, second initiation within first, second, or even maybe in the fourth or fifth month, he awarded them sanyas. And Srila Prabhupada knew that some of these are going to completely fall down. They will not be able to hold up properly the sannyas ashram. Prabhupada did not know that. Prabhupada knew it very well. But in spite of that, Prabhupada gave because Prabhupada had a mission. In, he knew that he had 11 or 12 years and he had so much time on this planet. And he had a particular work to do. And a particular seva. He needed to achieve it. So he, he came across, anybody who came across him and he wanted to Serve this mission. Prabhupada said, yes, come my dear boy. Come my dear girl. You know, and then he has even initiated without any yagya at airports by right outside the gate. When, 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 when he, Prabhupada was traveling so fast and then sometimes the devotee was introduced when Prabhupada was leaving the airport by the president or somebody in the temple. Prabhupada, this is Bhakt John and he's been chanting nicely and he's doing seva nicely in the temple. So when will you come back? And Prabhupada would nicely smile. Krishna knows when. But Prabhupada would then kindly say, okay, you know, I will initiate you now. And Prabhupada would pull out a set of beads that he always carried with him, the Tulsi beads. And he would chant at the airport, right in the lounge. 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नाउ टेल मी जॉन वॉट आर द फोर रेगुलेटिव प्रिंसिपल एंड हाउ मेनी मिनिमम गुड राउंड एंड जॉन वुड से the four regulative principles are no meeting no gambling no intoxication no illicit sex and i will chant minimum 16 good rounds okay your name is such and such a das and then propat gave them the, the, that particular individual a jiva initiation initiated him into the mahaprabhu sampradaya so the point being according to time place and circumstance chaitanya mahaprabhu had to first gain the respect of taking sanyas no vishnu sanyasi was available secondly he did a very special favor <coughs> on the sankracharya sampradaya and lord shiva who is non different from sankracharya he understood this very well and he was so pleased that mahaprabhu how how kind you are oh krishna that in spite this is a very messed up philosophy in most of the sankracharyas philosophers they all want to become one with you they want to become god in spite of that you are Live the name of Karuna Sindhu, and you you have taken initiation. Just see how merciful you are. Lord Shiva is smiling. Shankaracharya Pad is smiling, but his followers who are too much into grammar, showing the Puran and showing the slokas, they did not understand the truth. And they, he he addresses Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a great saint. वो तो बहुत अच्छे एक भक्त थे. अरे बाबा व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग भज गोविंद भज गोविंद भज गोविंद मूड मते शंकराचार्य पार टोल्ड हिज फॉलोअर्स दैट प्लीज वर्शिप गोविंद एट द एंड ऑफ द डे ऑल दिस ग्रामर दैट यू आर रीडिंग एंड यू आर मेकिंग ऑल दिस लॉजिकल आर्ग्युमेंट्स एंड एंड योर स्कॉलरशिप इन संस्कृत इज नॉट नहीं रक्षति दुख करने इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू प्रोटेक्ट यू एट द एंड ऑफ योर लाइफ दैट इज व्हाई व्हेन शंकराचार्य पार लेफ्ट हु वाज लॉर्ड शिवा हिमसेल्फ ही सेज भज गोविंद but the last message of shankracharya pad most of the followers did not understand and even today they all want to become god aham brahmasmi i am he satchidananda roopam shivo aham shivo aham i am that auspicious person i am god there is no god there, there is no krishna there is no shiva there is no ganesh there is no everything jagat uh, mithya brahma satya ultimately i am the truth the atma and atma is the parmatma and we merge into one and this is their philosophy that is why they are called mayavads they are called mayavads because they, they say that we are seeing this computer or this phone or we are seeing the, uh, the 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 picture or the deity of krishna or even if krishna comes here we see krishna sakshat because we are actually under maya actually there is no krishna there is no shiva there is no computer there is no table there is nothing actually it is all brahma jagat mithya this whole world is false and brahma satya so they are actually trying to merge into the brahma jyoti that is so chaitanya mahaprabhu takes sanyas doing a very special favor on that sampradaya so when he went to jagannath puri and sarva vadacharya also being a leading sankracharya follower he sarva bhoma sarva bhoma bhoma means the entire world sarva sarva means entire bhoma means world bhatacharya a uh, bhat means a brahman and acharya means a leader so he was a very good scholar in vedanta especially because the sankrit is the, the the followers of the sankracharya they are very much into vedanta the conclusion of the vedas with their perspective and translation and their interpretation of the vedas so and at, at the end of the day chaitanya mahaprabhu is one mayavadi bhasha sunila hoy sarbanash one who listens to mayavadi he will completely be destroyed and the example is given by krishna kaviraj goswami in the chaitanya charitam it is like when a serpent goes to a very nice bowl of milk pure milk milk is very pure and but if a serpent touches the milk then that milk has to be discarded so similarly the vedas the scriptures are also spoken by mayavadis the biggest mayavadi gita speaker in modern times that recently was chinmayananda and he has killed krishna uh, so and he spoke about bhagavad gita right there every few shlokas it says shri bhagwan uvacha 
and then he's saying it is the Bhagwan within the heart, within, that is me, the Bhagwan, who is speaking. These were his interpretations. So these, when and Sanskrit is very, very tricky. Those who cannot, in more than one, one, one word can have more than one meanings that are correct grammatically, but from the absolute term, they are only imparted by the Sakshad Haritvena, by those Vaishnavas who have imbibed the quality of Hari, that purity of Hari, that Kripa of Hari, who are able to give that Kripa selflessly without any reservations. That is Sakshat Haritvena. So that quality must be there in order to for Hari to give all those qualifications, just like if you have an obedient son who really loves you a lot and he obeys each and every command or even a request of a father, he takes it as a command on him. So that that son will automatically gain a very special favor in the heart of the father. And all the secrets are shared to that son. Similarly, those sons or those Vaishnavas who are fully surrendered to Krishna, to Radha Krishna, especially because of the Gaudiya Vaishnava component that I'm talking about, to them the the, the, the true purports are imparted really directly by Radharani and by Krishna. This is a very, very important thing. And to others, it will be hidden. And, and, and grammatically, they can be right. One word. So, Sarvamadacharya, he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing and he saw his Ekdanda Sanyas. And then he swooned. He fainted, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in front of Lord Jagannath in the temple. And when he fainted, he, uh, Saravadacharya every day used to go to the temple to take darshan. So when he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing and just chanting like a madman, like a crazy man, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, and then finally when he fainted, he looked at his disciples and he says, take him to my home, pick him up. So his disciples picked up Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from the temple in front of Lord Jagannath and took him to his body, to his home. And Sarvamadacharya revived him with some nice cold water and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As soon as he came back to his senses, again he started chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So when he was chanting at that time, Sarvamadacharya is simply looking at him in amazement that he's such a young effulgent personality and in his heart Sarodacharya is thinking I don't know if this boy he has taken sannyas, he has taken sannyas in my sampradaya in the Shankaracharya sampradaya, in the Bharati sampradaya and I don't know, he is dancing and just chanting, does he know any Vedanta, has he learned any Shastra, so he wanted to do a special favor on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and told Mahaprabhu Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that a Baba it's okay you're chanting and dancing, but you, have, you are, have taken sannyas in our most esteemed Sankracharya paths, Sampradaya. Have you learned Vedanta? Have you learned the different Upanishads and the Vedas? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like a very, very obedient child, because Sarvavadacharya was the age of probably his grandfather, very respectfully, he just said, that at that time he repeats this again. Guru or a murkha dekhi. My guru thinking that I'm murkha, I cannot read scripture. I should just simply chant. <laughs> yeah, he's saying, so that, okay, no problem. You know what? I will teach you Vedanta. So Sarva Acharya, the great Acharya, who had thousands of disciples, that Vachaspati, he's going to personally teach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Vedanta. And when he started teaching Vedanta, Seven days continuously he spoke about Vedanta and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like a very obedient student, he just simply looked at him. And then after the seven days were complete, Sarovadacharya says that I have spoken for seven days and you have not spoken a single word. You have not, not asked a single question. How do I understand that you have understood anything that I have spoken? Tumi bujibo na bujibo. Ame ki bujibo. 
How do will I understand that you have understood or not understood? <laughs> so then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to make a long lila short, I want to come back to this verse again. He says that, yes, whatever you say is correct. No, no, but whatever you understood, you tell me. No, Baba, whatever you said. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu takes a very humble stance. Then when he finally forcefully, Sarovadacharya says, what have you understood? Tell me. So then he started again speaking and then he takes one particular verse and he talks and that one particular word, Sanskrit word, which, uh, which was uh, Atmara. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu finds some fault in that composition or in that particular uh, context that Sarvavadacharya had spoken. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, was asked in sort of, sort of with disappointment and perplexed Sarvavadacharya, then you tell me what is the meaning of Atmaram. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been given that order by the grandfather figure. He starts describing so eloquently the meaning of Atmaram without touching all the other different meanings that Sarvavadacharya had. Sarvavadacharya was shocked. Who are you? And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually showed his Shadabhuja form. He showed himself as with the Kamandal and Danda Sanyasi presently. And then he showed the Shankha and Chakra of Krishna. And he showed two more arms, the bow and arrow of Lord Ramachandra, showing that I am that person from whom all the other Aktars emanate. And when Sarvavadacharya saw that, he fell flat Dandwats and he accepted Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the and he became a Vaishnav from a Mayavad and all his disciples surrendered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because Guru has surrendered that was the system at that time if Guru surrenders to a particular higher authority then all the disciples automatically surrender so like this so coming back to this Haritvena um, going a little bit more deeper I was on the word Hari right so we were describing in this. So is Krishna, Chaitanya, I was, on all this I established that how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, who is Krishna from whom lotus mouth all the Vedas emanate. Uh, he is the source. Dharmantu Sakshat Bhagavat Pranita. Because Vyasadeva is a incarnation of the incarnation of the incarnation of the incarnation. He is Mahavishnu, incarnation of Lord Krishna himself, Rajendra Nandan Krishna, Nandan Nandan Krishna. So, why did he use the word Hara in the Mahamantra? Hmm, this is very deep. He could have used uh, Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna, Radhe Radhe, uh, right? Replacing the word Hara with, uh, with, with Radhe or Radha. Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna, uh, Krishna Krishna, Radhe Radhe, uh, like that. So, the word Hara the Sanskrit part is very amazing. He says, Nija Sarva Sakti. So it is not only just Radha. She is the head of all my internal potencies in Vraj. So the word Hara means all these Manjaris, which is Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Gaur Krishna Dukhaji Maharaj, Bhakti Yuna Thakur Ji, etc. Rupa Goswami, the six Goswamis, all these, Narottam Das Thakur, Vishwanath Chakravar, Baldev Vidya Goswami, Loknath Goswami, all these are are the are a part of the word hara. Prabhupada even has mentioned, see, we have to read Prabhupada's books nicely. Krishna and Radharani are never known. Just like a great king, whenever they come, like a big president or a prime minister, Prabhupada has mentioned this in his purports. The entire entourage comes with them. So if a president or a prime minister is traveling, it is automatically understood that his ministers, his advisors, his on the on the plane, his chef. Uh, is, 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 uh, all, the, all the persons that are involved who are close to uh, even uh, you know like the presidents or prime minister's wife and children sometimes also travel with them. So it is understood. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jive Doya Kori Sa Parshad Siyodham Saha Uttari Atanta Durlava Prem Kori Vare Dhan Sikhaya Sarnagati Bhokate Ropran Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jive Dayakari out of pure compassion for the jivas in this material world. So Parshada Siyodham Saha Autari. He came down along with his associates. So he is never alone. 
Krishna is never alone. Radharani and Krishna are never alone. They are always surrounded. We sing that nice verse, no? Kasturi tilakam lalata falke vakshastale kaushtubham nasagre chana navamoktikam kartale venum kartale venum sarvange hari chandanam Gopastri Parivestita Param Vijayate Gopala Chudamani. The essence of the shlok is that Krishna is surrounded by Gopa Stri Parivestha with many, many gopis. Nija, Nija Sarva Saktis. Hara, all those haras. They are there with Krishna, serving Krishna, serving Radharani. So that is Nija Sarva Saktis. Gopa Stri Parivesh the Gopala Chudamani. The crest jewel Gopal is surrounded by these Gopa Stri, by the Gopis. Even in Brahma Samhita, the famous verse, uh, what is that verse? Uh, in the Govinda Madhi Purusham, Tamam Lakshmi Sahastra Shatasam Brahma Sevya Manav Govinda Madhi Purusham, Tamaham Bajami. Lakshmi Sahastra Shatasam Brahma. But this Siddhan Saraswati Prabhupada actually has translated each and every word of the Brahma Samhita. And Srila Prabhupada did not see a necessity to give a commentary on his Gurudev's translation. As it is today, that Brahma Samhita that we are reading in Iskan, that is available in all the bookstores, is actually the purports and the translation of a Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. So there, it is uh, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Prabhupada clearly says, Lakshmi Sahastra Shata. Thousands and thousands of Lakshmi means gopis. We are describing, Brahmaji is describing Golo Prandavan. Chintamani Prakar Sadmasu Kalpa Vriksha Lakshatruteshu Surbhira Virpalayantam Lakshmi Sahastra Shata Sambrama Sevyamanam Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Vaja. Served by thousands and thousands of gopis in the land of Golo Prandavan. So, like this, there is so much evidence. And the word hara means when we are chanting as practicing sadhaks, as practicing devotees, that if we have the proper understanding, when we, in the moment we chant the word hara, it means all the pure acharyas who are the manjaris in the service of Radha and Krishna, they are present in just the word hara. They are seeking their blessings. Baba, I am so fallen. I cannot even chant the holy name properly. I am full of so many anarthas. Hara. That is the reason why Krishna put Hara first in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Because they are Haritvena. They can take away all our misgivings, all our anarthas. All we have to do is simply follow them and surrender to their lotus feet. That is why we are praying every morning in the Guru Puja. Haha Prabhu Korodaya Deho More Padachaya Narottam Lailu Sharana This song that we are singing is from Narottam Das Thakur. He is addressing Lokanath Lokera Jeevan. And that Loknath means Loknath Goswami, his Gurudev. So he is addressing Champak Manjiri is addressing Manjulali Manjiri. Please I surrender to your lotus. Please give me the shade of your lotus feet. Oh Manjila Ali Manjiri, oh Gurudev. Because you are expert in serving Rupa Manjiri. You are expert in serving Radha Rani. That is Haritvena. That is the reason why the word Hara, uh, not Radha. And automatically, a, a Sadguru will never keep the pranams. When we bow down, Shri Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Prabhupada, do you know what he used to say even to his own disciples? When his disciples bowed down to Guru, he said, Dasosmi, I am your servant. That was the bow, pure Gurus. Because they have see the, from, they, they had that vision, they can see who is who in the Nitya Leela. And they always want to take that position where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has so nicely mentioned in Trinadapi Sunichena and Gopi Bhartu Padakamalayo Dasanu Dasanu Das. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used those words. I want to be a servant of the servant of the servant of the maintainer of the gopis. So this is also very deep meaning. What can I say? Things are just flowing. That gopi bhartu is not only Krishna. It is Radharani because Radharani maintains the life of Krishna. <laughs> that is the rasik meaning. So when they are saying das anu das anu das, I want to be a servant of the servant of the servant of Sri Radha. That is the meaning of gopi bhartu pada kamalayo. Secret meaning. <laughs> Shri Rade. So, that is Shakshat Haritvena. Samastha Shastra Rukta Statha Bhav Yata Eva Sadhvi. So, I will continue this next time because I think I've spoken almost two hours just on this first word, Sakshat Haritvena. And uh, hopefully, we will get some more rust in this verse itself. I think this verse may take maybe four sessions. I don't know. You know, <laughs> something is telling me. Huh? But you know what? It's amazing. These realizations, this uh, shedding with like-minded devotees who are really interested. Huh? We don't need a whole world around us. We don't need too many followers or anything. Let us encourage each other with this nectar, with this rust. So, Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to all the Acharyas in our glorious Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. All the Rupanugas, one Chakal Putra who is Chir. Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare